Hello, I'm Zaya. Welcome back to Venus by Frontier. I just took probably a two hour break, edited out the last video for both Patreon and on YouTube, while also just watching a video on YouTube too, actually. There's this uh, channel called Ants Canada that I have been watching maybe for about a month or something, and it's been pretty cool. I am not the biggest fan of bugs or insects in any capacity but watching his video is really interesting he just made like a vivarium which is basically like an aquarium that has you know an um ecosystem inside which is really insane because it's like a hundred gallon i don't know how big that is in terms of metric but it is really huge but yeah, it has just a whole ecosystem inside, which is just interesting to watch and see how it grows. But okay, that's just been what I've been doing, like while I take, took a break from the last episode. So let me just do a quick recap on the last episode. On the last episode, we went into Cert's auditorium. We saw what happened to Cert. He actually lost to Ymir after he used the Heart of Yggdrasil. But, turns out he didn't really lose, because after he lost and died, there was this coffin at the bottom of his throne, which has Sin Mara, which uh, she explained that she has been corrupted for, I don't know, at this point, maybe centuries now. Basically ever since the, the thing happened with Loki, right? when they were branded as a traitor. So, Cert is inside of Sinmara now. So he got both divine energy and dark energy in his body. Because he is in the body of a goddess, technically. How, how she used uh, dark energy is because she got corrupted, right? So that tells me that the corrupted goddesses that we do have might also exhibit the same pattern that Sinmara does. I don't know if this will actually do anything in the story. So far, the Dark Goddesses haven't really played a role. But hopefully, they will once uh, this chapter is done. Because at this point, we have already probably be thrown inside of a route, right? So I hope that the choices that I make actually do matter instead of it just not having any sort of consequences at all. And the last thing that we saw was Ymir actually protecting Loki. For some reason, I don't know why. That feels a bit out of character for him. But yeah, this is exactly after that. When he came to, Loki was lying on his stomach. He pushed himself to his feet. Mostly surprised that he still seemed to be alive. Then, Loki remembered when he was in a daze and heard Ymir's voice. Typo? Ymir! The first thing he saw was someone standing with their back to him. Loki had been protected by Ymir. Did he use the heart of Yggdrasil's full power to fight against Sigyarn's light? While Loki tried to think of what to say, Ymir fell backward like a structure that lost its support. He didn't even try to soften his landing, hitting the ground facing straight up. Next thing he knew, Loki was holding Ymir up. Ymir! Loki's heart was a vortex of conflicted feelings. Ymir had tricked him all this time. He was a rival in the secession war, and a worthy opponent in battles of strategy. But while Ymir only ever seemed to be using Loki, in that final instant, he certainly saved his life. Loki didn't even know how he felt about it, but he was bewildered. I don't understand why he saved us. He could have left us... He could probably have saved himself. Don't talk, Ymir. <laughs> Knowing it was futile, Ymir gave him a feeble smile. 
The shadow of death looming over, over his face forced Loki to shake his head. Why did you save me? I guess he never actually wanted to kill us, even during the fight. Like, all of his talk about uh, intimidating or antagonizing himself to Loki was all an act. Yeah, he... Mm, I guess what he was giving to Loki when he was still in that cave was actually sincere. By, you know, asking Loki to join hands with him. You respected me. Loki was dubious, but Ymir grinned. You know, that actually is a pretty good point. The fact that he could have tricked, or he did trick Fenrir, Yorm, and Hell means that he had the opportunity to also trick Loki into making him sign his name into the registry. Ymir gripped Loki's hand. His fingers clenched strongly. The Holy Land's registry was a dark gear that recorded the names of the trusting. Given Loki's restrictive life in the palace, Ymir's generosity should have easily swayed him. But Loki's deeply felt spirit of rebellion wouldn't let him show weakness. He doubted everything he ever saw, always sharpening the blade of vengeance and conquest. That's what brought him this far. He viewed Ymir as an enemy, and in the end, discovered his true intentions. So the only thing you need to do to get your name to that registry is literally just to trust him? That's interesting. That's pretty broken, isn't it? When Ymir let go, Loki was holding the heart of Yggdrasil. His mother's hand once left him with this key, and now, his dying cousin returned it to him. Fate always brought it back. The meaning of the key in his hand was something Loki had to accept. If I want to defeat Surt, this is literally the key to doing it. Is that the idea? <laughs> Ymir smiled with relief. His body went limp, giving Loki more weight to hold up. Ymir really used the last of his energy to say his piece, realizing that Loki's hands and shoulders quivered. I think there's supposed to be only one comma there, realizing that, right? Ymir! Ymir's hazy eyes looked behind Loki. Fina. She had been by Loki, so she escaped from Seg Segyarn's onslaught too, it seemed. Turka and the other goddesses lay sprawled about on the floor. Loki sent some fate divine energy to confirm they weren't dead, but they couldn't even move in that state. Loki realized relatively late that he should look around him. Cert was not hard to find. She was next to Odin and telling her something. Thankfully, her attention hadn't turned to Loki yet, and after Sadeyarn was activated once, it seemed it couldn't be immediately used again. Fina, let's get out of here. It's too soon to challenge Surt. You don't need to think about it. We'll talk about things later. Eventually, we'll rescue the goddesses too. Wait, so the go goddesses are out of my party too now? Oh no. 
I haven't turned all of them into dark goddesses. I am Loki. As long as I'm still me, I can't let myself be, myself be stopped here. Loki laid his cousin's body down and slowly stood up. Ymir appeared to nod in the end, but he was still faintly smiling as he entered his eternal sleep. There were no parting words, nor were words of mourning necessary yet. Wait for me in hell, Ymir. I'll be sending Surt to see you. I won't claim I'm seeking vengeance for you, but it's my way of taking responsi responsibility for this. Surt noticed him. Loki didn't hesitate to activate the key and transform into Vedrang. Shut your trap! You're fucking dead when I get the chance, you hag! Well, technically she is a hag. <laughs> For all we know, this version of Loki didn't even see his mother once, maybe. Her absurd, absurd chastisement, chastisement? I think it's chastisement, right? Was met with crimson flames. Vedrang's most powerful fireball wasn't enough to harm the transcendent being. But it did manage the dazer. Vedrang avoided being consumed by the dark light by triggering a series of explosions. Fina, come! It's not my fault if you get left behind. <laughs> Damn, he actually has a serious face for once. Vedrang shook off his pursuer and sprinted away. The burning heat in his heart now felt pleasant. Leaving his fate and his myriad fa feelings on the stage, Vedrang. Loki swore to fight again. I was like, huh? Why is it suddenly like Vedrang dot 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 and then Loki? Thus, the chaotic succession war concluded without a winner. As the greatest of all Dark Lords, Surt began her all-out invasion of Yggdrasil. The Book of History turned to a new page. Surt's Age of Darkness had arrived. Yup, that is the end of the chapter. That's decent, right? <laughs> not too bad, but also not good. We got two more Key of Destinies. I think we're at 6 out of 10. I'm not sure we're gonna be able to even get another 10. A knock at the door awakened Loki. He'd been asleep for quite some time. From what he gathered, he lifted his heavy feeling head and slowly got up. Loki thought he dreamt of something. But when he tried to remember what it was, the memory slipped through his fingers. He gave up and directed his mind back to reality, toward the reserved but constant knocking. Come in. Through the door came his aide and caretaker of many years, Fina. Her resolute face presented none of the fatigue from the violent battle a week prior. After that, they should have rushed to reorganize. But the time spent getting their feelings in order might have actually been useful. Loki sincerely asked what she needed. So the only uh, goddesses we don't have is Turka, Odin, and Freya. Thor and Rigret are still with me. Got it. Tell them we'll have a meeting in 15 minutes. I'll be ready soon. Fina politely bowed. Normally, that would be her cue to leave and go about her business. But for some reason, she stayed. What is it? Loki had an inkling as to what it was, but acted like he didn't. Regarding how Fina had been deceiving him, he of course had some thoughts about that. He hated to question her royalty after all this time. But when a woman in whom he had absolute trust turned out to have a secret, some lingering doubts were inevitable. Fina was put off by Loki's attitude, but found her determination and began to speak. We 
already know this, I believe. So they were either, well, they were probably sold as slaves, yeah. Probably not just sex slaves, but, you know, slaves in general. Loki listened to Fina's story in silence. As she talked about the past, her eyes glowed with a dark light. Even Loki didn't know her origins. She had been with him all his life, yet he was shockingly ignorant. Only now did he realize it. Okay, it was as a sex slave because they were in a brothel. So it was literally prostitution. And that was my father. Vina's face clouded with sorrow. Farba's negotiations must not have gone well, and that failure broke the bond between sisters with a decisive fissure. Even for sisters, destiny could vastly differ. One became a princess prince's maid and lived a fulfilling life. The other became the plaything of a deranged noble and lived in turmoil. Neither of them could be blamed, and there was nothing they did wrong, but fate pulled them apart. Even so, Fina's happy life garnered Minia's envy and hatred, and in a sense, there was no way around that. Loki internally agreed. Though only called a secretary, her authority as the speaker for the Dark Lord was immense. Minia was no more than some noble's possession. So if she wanted to achieve that status, she couldn't be picky about the method. Using all the tricks in the book, taking dirty jobs as necessary. And when she finally caught Surt's eye, her sister's master turned traitor. Fina owed Loki's family her life. After the destruction that left only Loki, she was forced to educate him in ways she never wished to. The attack on her conscience day after day was born from her downtrodden sister's malice. Fina confessed everything, but firmly beseeched him. Ridiculous. Loki silenced her with one word. Fina repeated after Loki, who nodded back. I wondered what might have caused this, but it was just Minia's grudge. It was your sister's childish game, and you were forced to play along. That's it. Fina professed her own crimes, her voice shaking. She wanted a clear-cut punishment. Loki knew this when he shook his head. Working against me, eh? That's true. You let your feelings for your sister convince you to trick me for decades. That's not easy to forgive, but... Loki brought his mouth close enough that their breath touched each other. 
then peered into Fina's face. Her wavering eyes stared straight back. Now you're mine. Minia wasn't with you nearly as long as I've been. You've sworn heartfelt loyalty to me. Fina was about to say something, but her lips were suddenly covered. She opened her eyes wide. Neither of them, neither of their eyes closed, their gazes crossing. The passionate moment ended a few seconds later. Loki pulled his face away and turned his back, his back on her. The past isn't my problem, but in the future, dedicate yourself to me, the same way you always have. I was waiting for her to say my name. Somewhere in his blunt behavior, Loki's personal sort of generosity could be glimpsed. Fina smiled for the first time in a while. In the end, the meeting began 10 minutes late. See, this is why I feel like this game is a bit uh, nicer in terms of the pacing compared to Alcano. They could have actually put an H scene there, but they didn't. <laughs> In terms of Alcana, it's just, oh my god, I really wish... There was this game, I actually have never played it, but it's called Mono Beno or something, or Mono Beno. But from what I know, the game does have eight scenes, but the whole story, if you don't... Um, if you don't actually go to the extra scenes once you finish the story, there's actually no eight scenes at all. Which I feel like most games should do that. Right? So instead of actually the eight scenes making you ruin the pacing, you ignore the eight scenes altogether in the main story, and if the player wants to actually get into the eight scene, they go to that extra scene scenario and they would just play it themselves, right? I feel like more games should actually do that instead of just putting it inside of the story as, as you know, just clearly fan service that doesn't fit and ruins the pacing. If it's a story where the eight scenes are really integrated into the story, like say Subahibi or Grisaya, that's okay. But Alkana clearly would benefit from having the eight scenes um, separated from the main story. Okay, continue on. The bridge was the site of the first gathering between Loki and the goddesses in some time. But it wasn't all of them. Turka, Odin, and Freya were captured by the enemy, so Loki's army had lost half of its military might. Surt's power was so vast that they were at an unavoidable disadvantage. And yet, they had to use the few cards left in their hand to try and eke out a win. Good work. Let the mechanics get some rest. Whatever plan they came up with, the ship had to function before they could start. Now that the airship was up and running, they could finally put together a concrete strategy. Ever since the fight with the Apocalypse, Garm had been working behind the scenes to maintain the army. Okay, so they are in Valhalla. So I guess we never actually go into the demon realm, at least from the looks of it in this story. Maybe in another route we would actually conquer the demon realm, but who knows. The first to speak up was one of the goddesses who, who still remain, Thor. Thanks to her holding the front line, Loki and Fina had been able to safely retreat from the chaos. Now, Loki saw her as an indispensable member of his army. Regret, even though she is her dark self, still also doesn't seem to be, you know, going full evil, so... I really have no idea whether or not my... My choices in making all these girls into dark goddesses actually makes a difference. Really weird. The other goddess, Regret, chimed in. Her main job was to lead the Apocalypse to safety, a job she did admirably. Guided by the goddess as a time of crisis, they were regaining their faith. 
Regret probably had no ulterior motives, but it did help Rafael, uh, refill, there we go, her divine energy. Did you find out something about them? The capitals. Search keeping them away from her? The unexpected development made Loki furrow his brow. Cert hadn't left the auditorium, so Loki assumed the goddesses were held prisoner there, but... Exposure to their people could, of course, give the goddesses a chance to restore their divine energy. It was the most surefire means of healing they had. Regret's idea had some logic to it, but... Sword is trying to destroy everything. Unlike Ymir, she has no reason to let the goddesses live. Why not just straight up kill them? This is weird. Thor crossed her arms and groaned. Nobody could answer her question, so there was a moment of silence. The silence was broken when Fina spoke for the first time in the meeting. I don't get it. Isn't Cert trying to destroy everything at this point? So it doesn't really make sense for him to actually even lead up a, a trap. He should have just, what, like use his skill to make the make the continent of Yggdrasil fall one by one. I considered that, but I don't see the point in splitting them up. Cert was still in the auditorium, dividing her own forces and making them fight a defensive battle sounded like a dreadful idea. Ever since hostilities with the Dark Lord began, the troops were strictly ordered not to respect Cert with any title. It was meant to eliminate their offer, but even Garm tripped up sometimes. Cert's influence was still deeply rooted within the monsters. Regardless, Garm's pragmatic eye for strategy got Loki thinking. A reason to keep the goddesses alive. The mystery of why they'd be placed in different countries. I've yet to get a full read on Cert. That much is true. But Cert has the, ap has the absolute advantage in the situation. And we're also at a standstill. Or maybe, this could be our chance to move forward. I will at least save, uh... Odin, just because I want to corrupt her. Fina guessed what Loki was thinking and, and urged him onward. Ugh, lost my breath there. Their years of working together put them in sync. She pushed Loki from behind. Loki never thought much about how pleasant that was. Encouraged, he opened his mouth. It might be a trap, but we won't. We don't have any options at the moment. If they were sent to all these countries. It's a good chance for us to take them back, no doubt. So we're saving all of them. Yes. First, we're going to save them. It was a brutal situation, but their morale was high. Once all the goddesses were united, a chance to strike back was sure to come. Their hope was faint, but all they could do was believe in that possibility. A possibility. The key, eh? Now that Sinmara's body was inhabited by Surt, it was his one mean of resisting. The heart of Yggdrasil. Loki thought back to Ymir's last words. Okay, we actually got Loki on the... 
like a uh, title there or not title but what do you call it undercover Ooh, this music though this has yorm so i assume all the capitals on the areas that they say will be guarded what the whoa they have music on this what the hell this is kind of cool <laughs> Not, no lie Wait, why is this in Edda? They said it was supposed to be in Valhalla. Okay, interesting. I guess it was in Edda and I wasn't paying attention. I guess only Cert was still in Valhalla. We can't call anyone yet. But after one fight, I'm gonna do one scene for Thor. Damn. This really feels like a freaking shonen anime, dude. I... I actually feel like this, uh... Eroge is way better than it should be. I'm actually very surprised by this, uh, visual novel, no joke. <laughs> it kept giving me, like, surprise after surprise. Even as a freaking like song, kind of crazy. The moves level four. You know what? I am gonna power level the while well, he's still pretty low. I need to put two more attackers here. Let's see. Do I want to hire anyone? I think I want to hire this guy, but I forgot. God damn it. Yeah, I think he, I, I could have actually hired him the same time as the Moo. Let's take a look at this guy. No, this is a defender, so I don't need him. Pierce attack, lightning field, attack, tactics, helmet split. I could maybe make the Oni girl. Wide attack, critical boost, parry, wall breaker, hardy physique. Hmm, I guess that's decent. I feel like right now, DD Shaq is actually showing his limitations. He has decent attack, but his low speed is really making him not able to do much. I really did not expect this anime <laughs> opening, to be honest. This is kind of cool. <laughs> I could make this elemental, elementaler, elementaler chick, but I don't know. Doesn't seem to be all good. Has ice field though, and boosts ice. The problem with making a very like good synergist team in this game is the fact that you can't. Uh, what is it? You can't. Um, sort units based on their elements and stuff. Sure, they give you the elements on the top right of their sprite, but it would make, uh, or it would help a lot more if they actually do it, right? Hmm. This is a mage. I don't really need a mage. What I need are these guys, really. Like, people that deal hard damage, or, you know, super big damage. Lethal critical 100? This guy is actually pretty insane. Wish I actually made you sooner, my man. I guess we're gonna try to make the Wyvern and also the Oni Girl. But okay, let's go attack one area first. So, preferably, the area that I, that I attack is going to be Odin. So, they said that Turka was in Thrudheim, so I'm not gonna attack this area. And Edda... I don't know whether or not this is gonna be... 
Freya or Odin. But either way, I think we're gonna have to do this. Tilly, you're doing decent. I might have to change Spartan and DD Shack into someone else. Someone that I can actually give loyalty up for. Let's see. Aaron's at 82. Fifty-nine. I think that's fine. Let's do it. Oh! No, 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 no. Don't attack that. Attack Edda. Let's go. A starter. This is probably tougher because of the defender. So I'm gonna go attack this one. Hmm. I need to put the bear there on the on the fifth one. Let me do that real quick. Not gonna be using this team for now. So that those guys are gonna go rest up. Okay, I'm gonna go attack this one. Let's go. I actually don't have a main team that can do that can do a skill, but I should be fine. Okay, of course they're gonna try to kill the Mu, since he is low leveled. Well, there goes the Mu. <laughs> it is what it is. Eren is doing work, along with Arsene. And of course, the AoE is doing work, or the dots. Okay, that guy is dead. Why? Wow, that zero is annoying. At least the dots are doing damage. Arsene is almost dead. Okay. Jeez, that only did five. Arsene is dead from the dots. Okay. Jeez, that uh, ambush really fucked us up. Come on! Jesus! Wow! We didn't even kill that one? Jesus, okay. All that, then we only killed two. Ah, oh, so many magic. Okay. We can get a scene now, which I will do, of course. We will do Thor's scene. And hopefully after this, we get Odin instantly. Man, these scenes feel so awkward now, don't you think? The fact that we're actually already in the... I wouldn't say this is the climax of the game yet, but... It is kind of the climax, right? And yet here I am doing 8 scenes. <laughs> God, I feel like the 8 scenes in this game is actually just tacked on. They're good, don't get me wrong, but... I really think... Uh, the, the story is actually the main drawing point of the game. At least I know when to actually put the 8 scenes in, though, in this game. Unlike in Alcana. Loki brought Thor to the sex training room. According to his calculations, today should be a new milestone for Thor's divinity and mental state. As such, he eliminated uncertain factors to whatever extent possible and took the utmost care in his plans. Compared to how Thor acted at first, she had become considerably more obedient and less inclined to resist. Even now, when she was freed from her shackles, she made no attempt to escape, instead opting to ask Loki to follow him. <laughs> Wait just a little longer. They should be here soon. Ooh, sorry about that. Rather than answer Thor's question, Loki looked toward the door. For Thor to demand they begin herself, the training must have been effective. Whether that night's guests would do their part was up in the air, however. Oh, I'm guessing it's gonna be the Amazon girls. Behind Fina, some tan, healthy-skinned, half-naked women entered the room. Thor looked at them and opened her eyes wide with shock. 
That's right, Thor. Your precious Amazons. Loki observed Thor's panic with a wicked grin. Straight to it. Wow, these girls are actually using... Uh, the, the CG actually used the girls that are similar to the sprites. So Arsene, Nadia, and a girl that I haven't made yet is actually here. <laughs> Interesting. But yeah, patreon.com is IQSK. See you guys on YouTube. Wow, that is actually a really cool looking outfit. I actually like this design, I can't deny. Thor held herself in her arms and quivered. Her euphoric expression showed not a sliver of concern over her transformation. It was pure joy. Heh. <laughs> You're looking good. Greedily following your desires is a good fit for you. Wow, she is very demanding in this version. Or, you know, commanding or whatever. When Thor kneeled before Loki, the Amazons didn't hesitate to follow suit. Jeez, calm down. <laughs> you couldn't have changed more. She had deeply held masochistic desires. Thor was quick to accept taboo and immor immortality as pleasure. Isn't that supposed to be morality? And those desires could also be directed toward combat. As a goddess and as a woman, Thor would no doubt prove greatly, greatly useful. Satisfied. <laughs> As if this would be enough for me. Right, Thor? <laughs> Questioned by Loki, Thor gladly responded. Thor's affinity shift was met with a variety of responses. Uh, uh, Turka, you're supposed to be not in this story right now, but okay. <laughs> I mean, I get it. So if I wasn't a Let's Player and, you know, I was just a random Joe playing through the game, I probably would have got, like, I would just played the scene exactly as I unlock them right so I wouldn't be withholding these scenes until I stockpile them stockpile them or shit like that right but the thing is because I am a let's player this actually makes the scenes very awkward <laughs> because I'm doing this out of sequence you'll see come in Thor with a bubbly reply Thor showed herself her appearance put a dubious look on the goddesses' faces, but they soon realized what had happened and gasped. <laughs> Thor was sincerely proud. Wanting her new appearance to be seen, she spread her arms. With even her morals altered, she entirely forgot the shame she might once have felt. Thor's 
That's the idea. I expect you to keep working for me. Of course, that goes for all of you. <laughs> Thor fawningly rubbed up against him. The watching eyes of those around them hurt for that one instant. What, are they supposed to be jealous or something based on that interaction? The conflicted goddesses left the bridge. Thus, Thor's unveiling perturbed the goddesses, but it ultimately ended well. I guess Turka was coded to always be in the story, right? Because uh, they probably didn't expect you to withhold corrupting the goddess till chapter 7 or something. So here, I'm actually going to be using units that don't have loyalty 100. Well, most of them are actually at loyalty 100. Maybe I could put the Viking instead of Spartan. And let me heal you up. Jeez, the Moo, you got fucked. Okay, I think we're good. Reason why I'm doing this is just because I want them to... ...get the loyalty. Damn, this music is nice! It doesn't have the vocals anymore, but this music is still nice, what the hell? <laughs> I wonder why they didn't put the music at the very end. Or, you know, like, uh... I'm talking about why they did not put the vocals on the very last turn. That would have made it more epic, in my opinion. Okay, he's uh, getting screwed. The Viking Guard is dead. Oh my god, Arsene, no! Don't worry, I think uh, my boy... Algermir can probably, uh, you know, carry us to victory. Yeah, I think he can carry us to victory. <laughs> God, he is so insane. Eren is also good. Get out of here. Come on! Okay, there we go. I was almost afraid that that wouldn't kill it. So, oh, this is Freya. God damn it. I messed up, but it's okay, I guess. Freya was being transported by an enemy unit when they receive a surprise attack. The enemy professed to be taking her on tour putting her on display around Edda, Determining their route and swiftly res rescuing Freya before they could set up camp was the gist of the plan. Good. Let's take Freya and prepare to get out of... Before he could finish speaking, Regret came with a report. Search troop should have been mostly dealt with after the initial ambush. But it seemed they had a squad waiting on standby. The possibility of Freya's transportation being a trap to lure them in fell within their predictions, so there was nothing to panic about. Loki calmly looked to the approaching figures. A group of large flying beasts. Flying hell beasts, which meant they were up against hell. Everyone, prepare to fight! Shoot down the hell beasts! The cannons roared, and the sorcerers unleashed fire and lightning. The Hell Beasts tried to escape the assault by rising in altitude, then began to take a sharp turn. Strange. Yes, Hell's usual ferocity isn't on display here. This low-level attack is one she would usually fly right through. I'm very curious about why Yorm, Hell, and Fenrir are also helping Surt. Considering Ymir is dead, so they should be out of his control. These ones above us were a decoy. Loki's fears were correct. An unnaturally strong wind blew through the plains. 
The ones attacking from near the ground were the elites led by Hell herself. Loki left the enemy in the sky to garm snipers and cannoneers, then went with Rigret to fight Hell. Regret activated the Liberty Shield to enhance Loki and the other's other troops' abilities. Within the same range, Hell and the rest of the enemies had their power equally limited. Against these powerful foes, it served as much appreciated support. Hell's first strike came faster than the eye could see, but Loki blocked with the pull of his halberd. Don't underestimate me. I don't have to rely on Vet to handle this much. Hell wave. Fuck! Blick and double. Fuck, that's so hard to say. As Loki thrusts on Vara. As the violent clash played out, Rigard and Garm exterminated the, exterminated the Hell Beasts. If Loki defeated Hell and the Hell Beasts lost their leader, their unity should break down. Loki and Hell's duel was the key to victory for either army. Loki. If you mean for freeing you from Ymir's book, you're mistaken. I didn't burn that page. Cert did. Okay, so that's why she's serving Cert right now. But she probably doesn't know that Cert wanted to, you know, destroy the whole world. If you're hesitant, you'll never beat me. Loki imbued Anvara with flames and sweep for a lethal blow. Hell dodged by the breath of a hair and charged her sight with dark energy. Her sight arch, or arced. It zipped through the air and kicked up a blood red tornado. Hell intended for this attack to settle the fight. Knowing this, Loki dashed forth. Rather than take on the tornado, he hurled himself right into it to find some way out of the desperate crisis. Loki's sudden action made Hell stare with shock. The whirlwind cut Loki's body. His many wounds sprayed blood. But Loki didn't defend himself. Rather, he felt the tornado with flame energy. The tornado swelled and distorted even pulling its creator into itself. Who's to say? Will I go down first, or will you? Let's find out. The flames spread to Hell's body. The fire spun and the wind raged, damaging both her and Loki. At this rate, there would be no winner. The most probable outcome was the death of them both. And I'm back. Sorry about that. Had to take a package. I can't believe it. this always happens when there's like a battle. I'm like fully amped up the voice act, the battle scenes, and I got a freaking package to get. <laughs> Sorry about that. As their limit approach, Hal had to make a choice. And then... The rainbow tornado dispersed like it was never there to begin with. Blick and Dabal's effects disappeared, and Hal fell to her knees. Loki stood himself up with the pole of his halberd and looked down at her. <laughs> oh, I knew you would stop the tornado. You have a burden on your shoulders. As a commander, your job is to lead your troops. Giving up that role so you could kill both of us wasn't an option. Loki's self-assured words left Hell stupefied for a while. He predicted all that before he jumped into the tornado? Though even if he had, it took a good deal of resolve to do such a thing. Loki was growing. Hell thought he was nothing but talk in the past, but now he could be mistaken for someone else entirely. Her tone implied approval of her opponent. The fights around them seemed to pick up on what happened and stopped at some point. Do you surrender, Hell? Uh, 
I wonder if in another route we can actually save Ymir. How gracious of you. Your army still has plenty of fight left in them, I'd gather. With the Dark Lord reborn to Sinmara's body, that made sense. Besides which, Cert wanted to destroy not only Yggdrasil, but the entire world as they knew it. Whether wrong or not, Hell's reason for maintaining allegiance to the Dark Lord was to protect her soldiers, and nothing more. Then there is one thing I want to ask of you. Nanda. Hell promptly replied. She skipped over any negotiations, which was appreciated given the situation. Loki nodded and went on. Keep the monsters from the Empire under control. I don't want any more of them joining Surt, so I want you to rein them in. And we don't want that, so seize control of the military if you could. That's the most appropriate role I could give you. I'm glad to hear that. Now, they would have fewer powerful enemies to contend with, and any future threat of reinforcements for the Dark Lord would be prevented. The mission to rescue Freya came with some unexpected acquisitions. Loki approached the carriage just as Freya came out, holding onto Thor's shoulder for support. Freya acknowledged Loki with a feeble smile. She seemed extremely fatigued. Yes. How is Freya? It seems Thor is the only one that has her eyes like fully mind broken in this version or in her, in her current form. I don't think anyone else's eyes are, you know, like that devoid of light. The question was answered by Freya herself. So she, she so seldom expressed weakness that this made Thor stare at her nervously. What did they do to you, Freya? Did they make a sideshow of you for some particular purpose? Divine energy? But you don't appear to have recovered at all. Gathering divine energy should help a goddess regain her power. But Freya didn't exude the energy she supposedly would have had. I feel like, uh, how is that possible? She should at least get some form of the energy. I don't think it's possible to pinpoint where the energy would go. Cert took the energy. What is the meaning of this? Cert could now use both dark and divine energy. But she was originally a demon, so maybe her divine energy was lacking. Without the fate of humans, of course she wouldn't be able to stock up on it, logically speaking. Right. Sorry I took your time, Freya. Get some rest for now. Held steady by Thor, Freya staggered away. Loki would retreat later, but his thoughts were still occupied by what Freya said. Cert was trying to extract divine energy. If so, it might be a hole in her plan. So we got Freya back, but doesn't look like we got her as a unit. I guess we actually have to cons actually have to progress the whole story to get everyone. So I didn't technically lose a lot of time by not getting Odin first. And it seems, uh... Oh man, we got this music again. I guess this music plays when it's in the daytime and at night you get the non-vocal version. But I was gonna say, it seems Fre um, Fina's event is gone. So I guess that's an event that we can only get before we know that Fina... Um was in cahoots with Ymir and Surt and Minya in fact. 
Let's see here. Gotta heal up these guys for sure. I'm wasting a lot of money, but I have a shit ton of money, so... This is, like, not that bad. I've been, like, not using a lot of money anyway for, you know, for a long time, right? So this is fine. This music is really nice. Okay, we're happy, but I think we need one more turn. She's not happy yet. I might want to make the living statue, but I don't know. These guys don't seem any good, sadly. So I don't think I've ever actually ever told you guys, but the um the symbols on these fighters or you know on these units basically mean this is a frontliner, this is a frontliner, and a this is a frontliner that can pierce through enemies usually. This is a range unit. These are ma mages. These are defenders, and these guys are usually hard. Hard hitting frontliners, but they have drawbacks usually. Either they are slow, either they only hit one unit at one at one time, or they usually have a drawback. In some ways. Okay, we're gonna try to get this. This shouldn't be too hard. I'll take two people defending. And then everyone else is going to try to attack. Should everyone else attack or should everyone else just defend? Hmm. I am very confident that I can fight or I can win. But I'm not very confident that three of my guys would be able to win against Fenrir, so... Shit. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm gonna... Wait one more turn, it's okay. That song goes ham, by the way. <laughs> okay, we didn't get uh, ambushed here. That did something, which I don't know what. The stab bar had two exclamation marks, but I don't know what that does. And Aaron is just destroying everyone. The Mew, not so much. Okay, Fenrir is healing, but that's fine. Keep hitting Spartan, please. Okay. Okay, two should be enough here. Boom. Okay, story. Ah, oh, this has gotta be... A Thor story, right? Usually when there's music playing like this, it usually doesn't involve story as in the literal sense. On the battlefield, two small squads were having a mock battle. Soldiers forcibly recruited from around the continent needed to be organized into a cohesive unit with this training. Deceiving the opponent, predicting their tactics, and other elements of real combat played into the fight. The soldiers were observed by Thor. She looked out at the skirmish and analyzed everything from the soldiers' actions to their innate talents. Later, she would use the data to submit a suggested squad formation to Loki. Thor had a good, uh, good eye for an individual troop's skill, skills and a knack for sorting them out, abilities in which Loki had the utmost trust. Producing an exemplary army was a talent Thor always possessed and one that only seemed to become more polished after the alignment changed. The biggest change being that Thor not only put effort into training women, but men as well. Thor returned from the practice match and encountered Loki. As they greeted each other in the hallway, he noticed a few young men at her side. Loki realized who they must be and gave her an inquisitive look. Are these the ones you were talking about? I 
Huh. In what sense? Well, never mind that. Loki shrugged and took another look at the men's faces. The recent recruits fearfully recoiled from Loki, but deep in her eyes, he spotted a glimmer of desire. The reason they were brought here didn't seem to be a mystery to them. The fact they didn't back out meant Thor's ex expectations must have been accurate. Wouldn't I get in the way? I suppose. Thor looked at him with anticipation. What would happen next was a rite of passage for Loki's officers, Thor's recently implemented welcoming party. At those banquets, the now hedonistic goddess put her new personality on display. The invitation greatly interested Loki. Uh, now that you're, you know, your deserved goddess Thor, I really don't care about, <laughs> you know, about you. I appreciate the offer, but... Loki shook his head. He still had urgent business to attend to, and until that was dealt with, there was no time for games. I doubt that that would actually lead to an 8 scene, but you know, I'm just really not interested, Thor. Right, I'll remember that. Thor briefly looked disappointed, but quickly got herself together and left with her troops. Loki shook off his regret and left the hall. Don't think we took too much damage from that fight. But I'll still heal, just because. Okay, everyone else can probably go rest up. Oops. No new scene with Fina. I might have actually locked Fina's scenes, I don't know. Maybe I, I, I could have. Maybe some scenes are actually locked by the amount of affection I have on some of these units. Which could be interesting. Damn, Aaron, you are insane, dude. Arsony, too. Jesus Christ. We are crushing these guys. God damn! Well, you guys still don't hold a candle to Ar Algrimir, but he's kind of a cheater. <laughs> Can't really compare you guys to him. The frozen goddess statue stood against a backdrop of endless snow. In a sense, they fit each other. Odin. After she was captured in the auditorium, the goddess was taken to Glatz and put on display in this form. Frozen in a state of virtual death, her mystique still garnered the people's faith. That was the reason she was kept alive, ironically. Loki's army came to her rescue by setting foot in the frigid land. And Odin was being guarded by... Fenrir greeted them with a wave of her hand. Behind her sat the frozen goddess, which she brazenly leaned up against. If Odin were conscious, she might be fuming with anger. Could you give Odin back? Enough, Thor. Loki calmed the wrathful deity. Fenrir had some sort of plan. First, he had to make that apparent and move on to negotiations. Continuing the conversations like this would only play into her hands. Regret was left to draw the attention of the surrounding enemies, but unfortunately for her, she'd have to hold her ground for a while. Fenrir, I know you don't need to stay loyal to Surt. Now that Ymir is dead, we have no reason to fight 
to fight either. Fenrir gave him a meaningful look. Loki instinctually had a bad feeling. More than a feeling, really. He knew what she wanted. That is like out of the question. I knew it. Loki almost let out a heavy sigh, but managed to hold it back. Sorry, but I can't accept those terms. How could I? Freeing a hostage by offering himself up instead would miss the whole point. Fenrir shrugged, but seemed to see it coming. She looked less disappointed than Loki expected. Huh. Oh, sorry. I thought that was Loki. <laughs> I got too excited voice acting this game, man. There's an idea. Nice thinking, Thor. What did she say? Okay. Thor looks surprised to hear that. Fenrir, how about a compromise? What do you think about a duel with me? Oh, it's simple. If I win, you let Odin go. If you win, you can do what you like with me. If that's good enough for you, then we have a fight. <laughs> Fenrir imagined something engulfed. Loki almost regretted his, his proposal, but it was too late to back down. He nodded and waited for her response. Fenrir aggressively grinned. Then let's get started. There's not much time, so I want to make this quick. Thor, stay out of it. If she complains that I broke my promise later, we'll have trouble. Loki held Thor back, then stepped toward Fenrir. Fenrir lashed her whip to keep Loki at bay. The duel forced Thor to wait on the sidelines, but she looked frustrated. Fenrir was a fearsome foe. Her concerns were perfectly warranted. In their previous battle, Loki had to rely on Vedrung's power to make it out safely. If he wanted to guarantee a win, he'd have to activate the key, but that wouldn't show my superiority. This time, I'll beat Fenrir with my power alone. I guess this is, this is like a scene where, you know, we're showing that Loki is uh, growing as a person and also as a combat unit. Since he's not really doing a lot of just using Vedrung's power to his advantage anymore. Loki resolutely put the key away. Fenrir's dark gear was battering Tavati, a whip that instantly froze its target. If you wanted to avoid being trapped, getting the first move would be ideal. I'll I'll run right up to her faster than the whip can move. Loki slipped past the flurry of attacks and swung his halberd. But Fenrir danced out of the way of the strike and counterattacked. The whip closed in. Dodging would be most, mostly impossible. Loki quickly raised his halberd. He intentionally let the whip wrap around it, then let go of the pole. Without his weapon, Loki had no means of resisting. It was a repeat of their previous battle. He does have that dagger, though. That was the moment Fenrir believed victory was hers. However... What the? Did he use Taijutsu? There was a dull bludgeoning sound as Fenrir's body folded. Her breath stopped. The pain knocked, bl knocked blew out her consciousness. The pain knocked? I think that's, that should just be the plane knocked her consciousness or the pain blew out her consciousness, right? Typo there for sure. So she didn't grasp what had happened for a few moments. By the time she noticed Loki had given, given up his weapon to hit her with a punch, it was too late. 
She could untie the whip from her from the Hobbit's pole, but even that would waste time. Loki wouldn't let a chance like that pass him by. Ha! <laughs> the fist stopped right in front of her face. Fenrir realized she had been spared. If that attack landed, she most likely wouldn't be alive. Really? Just a punch in the face? Is she really that weak defense-wise? That she felt that way said how powerful the punch was. <laughs> so we're skipping the training arc and just instantly showing that Loki is growing stronger by the minute. <laughs> I don't like how this game is trying to make it see, see, like you know, seem like Loki is crazy overpowered right now. But I guess they're also trying to show that these girls are a joke now compared to before. Fenrir's voice was faintly shaky. Loki saw she had no further intention to fight, so he lowered his arm. Fenrir also returned to Halbert to Loki. Vet probably had some influence on me. Fighting barehanded has, had, has its applications. That's something I learned from him. Vedrung's actual strength came from his indomitable fighting spirit. He had Varnard, but he never relied on that alone. His own body was also his weapon. It was a viable fighting style, as Loki came to learn. Now, looks like that's settled. <laughs> Fenrir futilely shrugged. She seemed less frustrated than expected, but maybe Loki imagined it. <laughs> Apparently, he wasn't imagining anything. If you help raise me at all, I can't say I remember it. Now it was Loki's turn to shrug. After Fenrir surrendered, Thor urged her to thaw Odin from the ice. The surface layers turned into water until Odin's small frame came into, in contact with the outside air, bringing the life back to her face. They watched with bated breath as Odin's eyes slowly opened. I didn't know you were with Fenrir, damn it. Sorry. Her typical arrogance was the first thing out of her mouth, as stunning as it was relieving. When Loki generated flames for her, Odin rubbed her hands together and warmed up. Her body's divine energy waves were greatly diminished, implying she had weakened. <laughs> Do you know something? What does that mean? Presumably, she should know what she knows, but she was vague about it. The response made Loki cock his head. They're still fuzzy. Loki sighed. The means by which Surt planned to make Yggdrasil fall was of the utmost interest to Loki. But if she couldn't remember, then that was that. Couldn't we use the key on Odin so that would make her remember her sealed memories? The heart of Yggdrasil had something to do with it at least. That treasure was in Loki's possession. As long as he had the key, there was still time to think. First, you should get some rest. Maybe it'll help you remember something. Odin got a piggyback ride from Thor. It wasn't very becoming of the highest deity, but probably the easiest way for Thor to carry her. Thor looks somewhat happy about it. Alright, no use staying here for long. Let's retreat. Send Regret the signal too. And Fenrir. Fenrir looked pleased. After melting Odin from the ice, she was left standing around, but now she skipped toward Loki. 
You're coming with us. I wonder if this only happens because I got too affection with her. Hmm. A flagrant objection came not from the in invitee, but from Thor. They fought on the battlefield of Threadheim. Not only that, but their personalities give them little common ground. Thor's shouts receive a lecture from Loki. We can't leave her unchecked. It'll be better to place her in our sights and get some use out of her, I would think. Odin put Thor from from on her back, making her begrudgingly shut up. Loki took that as approval and once again faced Fenrir. Well, Fenrir, if you're willing to work with me, I'll consider offering some decent hospitality. Didn't take you long to decide. Fenrir was so understanding that it actually perturbed him. Amused by his reaction, she nudged up to Loki. Nope. <laughs> Not at all, Fenrir. Only because you're talented. I have no ulterior motives. But you are planning to anyway, you, you say. I guess not. Not Now that you mention it, that sounds like something you do, Typo. Fenrir's obsession with Loki was already becoming common knowledge. She didn't seem to have any attachments to Surt's army either. So her decision to join Loki was the most natural conclusion for her. Man, looks like we're only going to be able to do one HC in this episode too. <laughs> Considering we won't be having Thor, or sorry, Odin for a while in the team. Go easy on me. Fenrir licked her lips, giving him goosebumps. Odin couldn't fight for a while, but that hole could be filled by Fenrir, hopefully. Fenrir clung onto Loki and made everyone around them uneasy as they hurried back to the ship. Yeah, I assumed that was because I got too affection for Fenrir. She even still has my equipment. Which I could probably improve. She has this, Helmet Split and Slay Mechanical. She doesn't have Lethal Critical. Added Attack and Slay Demon. Ooh, Added Attack. She needs better support though. She has this, Dark Field and Critical Boost, Ambush Alert, Boost Squad. Damn, if only I can make this, I, could, I would definitely give this to her. She needs something that actually does damage. Wow, she's only level 39, you're... What the fuck, she's only level 39? The game expects you to be level 39 when clearly, when we were fighting Cert, he was level 66? <laughs> that is one of the most bullshit crap I've ever seen. Okay, there's a fight there. Guess I'll let these guys defend. While I attack. I for sure will be able to do it. Yeah, these guys don't really need to heal up. Only these guys do. And let me put Fenrir before I forget. Man, this music is nice. <laughs> Let's see. This might be pretty tough. But they don't have a defender. So as long as I actually fight, or you know, as long as my units go first, we should be able to win. And we got Algermir. We can't use any techniques though. She's gonna use Super Bifrost. Causes paralysis. Ooh, damn. Okay, that didn't happen, thankfully. Don't die, Spartan. 
Oh, we're not doing damage. Come on, Augurmir, do something. The Moo's not doing damage either. Jeez. Wow, even Eren's not doing damage. That's crazy. Okay, at least she's dead. Wow, Spartan's dead. Okay, we good. Only one casualty, should be fine. Oh, I forgot to actually check whether or not I can make that Wyvern. Crap. I think I messed up. I guess, uh, I guess it's okay. We can make more later down the line. I think I missed it though. Yeah, I missed it. God damn it. Okay, gotta heal up Spartan. Okay, heal up everyone. I think everyone can rest up here. Alright, let's take this capital and be done with uh, the current story. There's probably gonna be a new story arc after this. But I think I'm actually going to have to end before we get to the next story arc. What I realize about this game is that once you actually go through a story arc, the next story arc is actually gonna be pretty lengthy in terms of, like, cutscene length. Okay, that did no damage to Demu. <laughs> you kinda suck. Jesus, Arsene. Okay. Man, I feel like uh, my boy Spartan is gonna die again. Frick. The problem with this team is that it doesn't have a healer. And... There's really nothing wrong with not having a healer. I just want to train the people's loyalties right now. Once their loyalty is actually 100, I'll probably put back Nadia in this, this team, since she is just very good. A surge of lightning burned the dense trees. Each time Thor threw M Mjolnir, it blew an enemy platoon to smithereens and created an opening in their formation. The gap was invaded by our prized Amazons. They used the wo wooded terrain to have their way with the opposing soldiers. Threadheim was their guardian deity's turf. <laughs> Thor is pretty invigorated. Back when he fought her and took over Threadheim, he had to admire himself for managing to pull it off. Leaving command of the army to Thor seemed like it would be fine. Loki was relieved he could go off to save Turka. In the forest up ahead, there was a fortress where Turka was imprisoned. <laughs> Shit! The most annoying person possible is here. Loki heard the angry shout and scowled. He didn't know where she got it, but Yorm got rode on top of a golem that chased after him. She hopped off its back and quickly prepared for battle. What do you want, Yorm? <laughs> Man, you're not menacing anymore, Yorm. You're a freaking Chapter 2 boss. Huh. <laughs> Will you ever learn? Loki couldn't help but shrug. After her previous failure, Yorm had apparently been assigned to Dark Lord Surt's troop. Ymir had lost, and most of the Imperial Army pledged allegiance to Surt again. So it didn't come as much surprise, but... Honestly... Having to keep dealing with Yorm was a drag. It took you this long to notice? They previously had a one-on-one -on -one fight that Loki won. But she didn't count that, apparently. Loki gave up and readied his halberd. Fine, you're on. But if I win, you have to stop following me. The succession war has long since come apart. 
What more reason do you have? Ha! Loki interrupted with a slash. Your arm narrowly blocked the blade and complained. You shouldn't have gotten distracted. Preventing any counterattacks, Loki stabbed and sliced in rapid succession. That Yorm still managed to fight back was impressive, but reflexes alone couldn't fend off Loki's horn spear handling. After surviving so many battles, Loki had come to learn some of Vedrung's combat skills. He was no longer the person she knew back in the Demon Realm, and he was going to teach Yorm that physically. I guess that's how they're gonna chalk up Yo uh, Loki's... Uh, Crazy power level scaling. <laughs> What's wrong? I thought you could beat me one on one. Loki provoked Yorm into swinging her claw. He calmly countered. And then. Are you serious? Wow, she is the most. Like, uh. Disappointing fighter of all of the, sis the sisters. Yorm stared at the tip of the halberd against her neck and trembled. I win, Yorm. You're not as strong as me, that's all. Are you talking about our days in the Empire? You wouldn't know a blade was pointed at Yorm judging from her fury. Loki was slightly perturbed. What? It took you that long to feel- Loki stopped himself from calling her dumb at the last second. It was best not to mess with her too much. Even Yorm should be treated with that degree of respect. Well, you're not weak, so don't worry about that. But there are always people above you. Maybe I'm not the one who should tell you that though. I appreciate it. Loki began to feel stupid for even pointing his hobbit at her. So what's next for you? Our match should be settled. So I hope you don't forget the condition I put forward. That depends on what you do. If she was still going to side with Surt, he couldn't let her escape. Either killing her now or taking some measures to stop her would be necessary, but... Assuming there were no complaints, Yorm puffed out her chest. Yeah, I assume you actually get Yorm and Hell if you got them to two affection. Ugh. Should I take that to mean you're leaving Surt's troop and returning to the Demon Realm then? Loki thought that's what, that was somewhat agreeable of her, but kept it to himself. Yorm proudly nodded, her unwaveringly aggressive eyes glaring at Loki. Well, whatever. It doesn't sound like she's lying. I should be able to leave her be without much danger. With that decided, Loki lowered his weapon. At the same time, Yorm jumped backward and rushed onto her golem. God, she is annoying. Yeesh. The fading sound of her parting words made Loki loudly sigh. After they drove Yorm off, rescuing Turka went surprising surprisingly smoothly. They trounced the guards and set foot in the room where Turka was held. They saved her and secured the camp swiftly. But by the time they reunited with Turka, her divine energy was so drained that she felt fa fatigued. Yes, I still have to get some use out of you. Loki said as he held Turka steady. Behind his calculating words was some awkward kindness. Turka knew this when she accepted Loki's aid. Sorry. 
Man, Turka, I don't know what sort of kindness you saw in Loki considering I went into the evil route, but okay, whatever, girl. Oh well, get some rest first. When Turka leaned against him, they held each other. After so long without smelling her scent, it gave him a nostalgic, calming sensation. Loki wrapped his arms around her and spent a, a while basking in the warmth. His memories of his mother were, were corrupted by certain in the worst of ways. But in reaction to that, Loki found himself more sincere toward Turka than before. What? Loki frantically let go of Turka. Then he remembered she was in a weakened state and held her up again. Fina watched the embarrassing chain of events with a grin. He brought her along to invade the fortress, so the fact that he forgot was a colossal mistake. Just tell me what you need, Fina. I see. Well done. After Fina's formal response, Loki finally pulled himself together. That's true, you'd expect there to be at least 8 units just like when we were facing Ymir. Hmm. Maybe Surt actually wanted us to confront him again. Or sorry, HER this time. True. Maybe losing one or two goddesses isn't a problem for them, but still. If Surt wanted to destroy everything, she wasn't doing a very good job of it. And I'm back. Sorry about that. There was a loud noise outside of my room, so I had to pause the recording. But yeah, we are back. It felt like she was laying back in the auditorium and intentionally giving Loki a chance. If that was Surt expressing her confidence, that would be all there was to it, however. Why would she do that? It was no simple hatred of goddesses. From how Turka put it, there was something more suspicious at work. Turka opened her mouth, but said no more before hanging her head. Hey wait, if you're going to say something, then say it. No matter how much she shook her by the shoulders, Turka... Turka kept her mouth shut as tight as a shellfish. Yeah, that's a typo for sure. Loki didn't want to be too forceful when she was enfeebled, so he was left with nothing but frustration. Regret's intrusion made any follow-up questions even harder to ask. Loki gave up and let Regret escort Turka. Regret, take Turka someplace safe. Let's go, Fina. We need to meet up with Thor to ask how the battle went. As Loki left with Fina, Regret blankly watched them go. Man, they're really pushing the Turka x Loki pairing here. As I said, it makes a lot more sense if Loki was not evil and <laughs> and had all these goddesses into dark goddesses, but this just rubs me the wrong way. Regret sensed her sister's dismay and looked at her with concern. Later, Turka was picked up by the Sinmara, where she received treat treatment intended for goddesses. She wouldn't recover for a while. 
Okay, there we go. I think this is actually where I'm gonna end the episode because like I said, after we do finish a, um, a character or a story arc, the story leading to the next arc is actually gonna be at least 30 minutes, which I feel like is way too long for the current episode. It's already two hours actually right now. I really wanted to make everyone into Dark Goddesses. Man, I've been wanting to do this since like three weeks ago or something like that, but god damn it. <laughs> the story has just been coming in waves and it's not stopping. Pretty insane. But yeah, I think this is where we're gonna call it an episode. I rarely put in save files during these scenes, as you can see. Usually it'd be after I'm done with a scene so that we can get to the gameplay. But it is what it is. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Give this video a like if you guys like it. Sub if you guys haven't. Patreon will be getting these episodes early access along with everything uncensored. And also, for people on YouTube, if you guys are not on Patreon just yet, do become a free member because I will be putting first episode previews of future playthroughs. See ya!